So are there any typologies for uh, the evolution of civilizations? Well, here is a model that is proposed for a state's beginning. So you can say uh, irrigation and agriculture had the roots uh, in terms of providing ways to have settled uh, sedentary life as we said several times which uh, again led to increased fertility rates population and then complexification of societies hierarchical uh, structures in societies and so on but irrigation and agriculture would have led to increased production differentials uh, concentration of wealth uh, great families and then uh, that would uh, feed into uh, state organization but you also had other loops happening here uh, leading to uh, maybe state organization or uh, you had increased warfare because either wealth agricultural productivity and associated uh, power would have given uh, uh, resources for militarization and creation of war leaders which again would lead to state organization uh, and of course urbanization and large cities as we will see in many cultures maybe uh, first urbanization being large and effective in the Mohenjo-daro Harappa region uh, around 5000 to 3000 BC or so and urban uh, or 5000 to 3000 years ago uh, urban proletariat so uh, structures in uh, societies division of labor and uh, taxation uh, infrastructure all those sorts of things would have evolved but increased warfare also would have been fed by variation in local production strategies so either you are able to use the land effectively and water effectively and have lots of production access and militarization or you had a uh, uh, need to uh, go seek other uh, resources for food because you were running short after population had settled down and it was not easy to move so you had to manage the uh, climate perturbations and productivity losses by uh, using increased warfare for example uh, redistributional institutions uh, tax land ownership uh, and so on would have come into uh, uh, existence leading to managerial offices and again feeding to great families uh, where you know how elitist families get formed that concentrate power and so on that feed into state organization so obviously this is kind of a hypothetical uh, flow of uh, causalities but nonetheless uh, you get the idea so just as a brief uh, introduction to uh, evolution of civilizations uh, this chapter contrasts the historical and anthropological approaches to the origins of states and summarizes the six main theories developed by archaeologists uh, Gordon Child's urban revolution theory centered on the development of city another group of theories uh, involved the intensification of agriculture and irrigation uh, the innovations would have happened just to reduce uh, uh, effort or to exploit available water or uh, to increase yield to uh, uh, gain economic superiority and feed the military so all kinds of possibilities are there exchange networks and warfare have also been espoused as potential causes of civilization so the definition of civilization itself has to be uh, questioned here so uh, warfare as uh, potential cause for civilization sounds kind of funny right many modern theories revolve around systems evolutionary hypotheses and explanations involving environmental change so again the environmental determinism can be used in uh, evolution of civilization is a uh, uh, question but uh, it's possible that environmental perturbations and impacts on agricultural productivity would have led to uh, 
systems evolutionary hypothesis of civilization. A new generation of social approaches on the other hand argues that religious and informational factors epitomized by central uh, centralized authority have been key elements in the regulation of environmental and economic variables in early civilization. So at some point this battle of state and religion and how religion affects the state, uh, how people with tributary powers like chiefs or kings and uh, so on would uh, uh, cede to religious authorities in making decisions uh, etc also have to be considered. Such theories also stress that the social structure of a society ultimately determines its transformation so the search for the causes of civilization focuses on ecological variables and the opportunities they present to individuals pursuing political goals in different societies. In other words, how is ecological opportunity or necessity translated into political change? So this is kind of towards Jared Diamond's ideas we'll discuss later in terms of creeping normalcy and landscape amnesia or societal choices that uh, focuses on ecological variables and his argument is that societies can choose to go to go extinct or collapse or not based on these sorts of choices uh, or being aware of creeping normalcies and uh, avoiding landscape amnesia. We will see what that means later on in the uh, last chapter of the other book. Okay? Recent research is now focused on the dynamics of how ancient civilizations functioned on factionalism, ideology and gender as promising areas of inquiry. So which societies allowed uh, uh, you know, ideological uh, reasons to guide the choices and rules and regulations, norms and punishment, how factionalism occurred or tribalism translated into factionalism in the name of civilization and how gender uh, freedom for uh, women, for example, um, was allowed uh, in different societies or cultures. The record of early civilizations can be written in cyclical terms. Their collapse may be closely connected to diminishing returns from social complexity as well as normal political processes such as succession disputes. So if you have family uh, owned chiefdoms or uh, princedoms or empires then even now there are many uh, many countries states owned or ruled by family dynasties and lots of intrigues happen in succession disputes however human societies are resilient and many basic values beliefs and institutions can survive the implosion of a complex society. So how a society recovers and continues after an implosion happens uh, in the face of complexity is uh, something that has been discussed and this argues that uh, human societies are generally resilient and basic values, beliefs and institutions can survive. Of course now with democracy uh, what are called power by consent where you elect leaders uh, US is now constantly struggling and some uh, historians warning uh, that uh, democracy is teetering on the edge. So how will US for example recover from the current crisis that started uh, with the election in 2016 let's say uh, and how it will emerge uh, in the midterm elections in 2022 and how will the 2024 election look with the major player that's causing lots of the uh, uh, problems so we'll have to uh, watch and see so we may be getting some lessons on civilizations even in the 21st century from the most advanced uh, of all countries okay so we'll come back and look at uh, uh, other region in the next podcast and leave this idea of a general model for uh, evolution of state states and civilizations uh, here okay